This is Talking Business Africa and I'm Lera Tumbele in Maputo, Mozambique. Now, smoking cigars is an indulgent habit that's associated with revolutionaries such as Che Guevara or a prime minister like Winston Churchill. It's even something enjoyed by Hollywood A-listers and increasingly women as well. The view is that if you smoke a cigar, you are somebody who is debonair, a perception that's held about the middle class here in Africa and there's even more of a reason to think this way because there's a brand of cigars that are made in Africa in fact right here in Maputo Mozambique if these walls could talk they would tell stories of a bygone era where beautiful people danced to jazz and romanticized politics this is the world that Pedro Porsche are trying to recreate this range is called My Father's Cigars. They are very old Nicaraguan cigars, beautifully made. The cigar parlor is located in Four Ways, Johannesburg, and in this glass-like vault is a large humidor. In it, they store a wide selection of cigars imported from Latin America. I enjoy my Nicaraguan cigars. Nicaraguan is uh, very volcanic, so you'll have a very chocolatey, wooden flavor to it. And your Nicaraguan is now lately seen as the best cigars in the world. Could you explain to me why it is that South America, Latin America is dominant in this trade? It started from the grand, grand, grandfather. And most of these brands, they're all family owned um, and it's generation to generation. Depending on its blend and its geographic profile, a single cigar is priced anywhere between 15 and 50 US dollars. One box is worth a small fortune. This is why Kamal Mukheba had the idea to make cigars on the African continent. In neighboring Mozambique, he set up a production facility, trading under the name Bongani, hoping to capitalize on the country's thriving tobacco industry and Mozambique's growth prospects. How much connection do you have to local producers? What we did is we brought uh, seeds from the Dominican Republic, specific varieties for cigars, and we gave them to tobacco farmers. The point is these people have been growing tobacco for 100 years. All we have to do is grow the right varieties and then process the tobacco the right way for cigars. To make these cigars, Bongani prefer the techniques used in the Dominican Republic and have even convinced the Toshidor, or a professional roller, to move to Africa so as to pass on his skills. It takes about a year to train a cigar roller to the required level. But when you think about it, cigars are a perfect product for Africa, certainly for Mozambique. It is a highly skilled job, it is an export product, and it, is, it can create a lot of jobs. Mozambique is a small economy, but it's said to be a promising nation. And even though the environment exists to sell such a niche product, it's not yet sustainable. We pretty much cover our costs with the local markets, and then we export to South Africa, Kenya, and soon to Nigeria. Across the border, South Africa remains a huge buyer's market. But what these customers want to know is how a made-in-Africa cigar fares next to the best from around the world. The proof is in the touch, the pull, the aroma and the overall experience a connoisseur expects while enjoying it with friends. So smoking cigars is really associated with high-end luxury living, which is why creating a heritage brand such as this really speaks to the hopes and dreams of the new middle class. It also adds value to the burgeoning manufacturing sector in Africa. And despite the health concerns, those who support the making of cigars believe it will lead to a new kind of job creation. You've been watching a short story from our monthly program, Talking Business Africa, and I'm Lerato Mbele in Maputo, 